So just because I enjoy it, I'm going to play devil's advocate. So Stephen Gardner came out and said the FBI narrative is basically dead on. So I'm going to look at some alternative theories about the 30 out six bullet. So we have basically everyone, including myself, disagreeing that a 30 out six would not basically explode his neck or his head. If you ever watch hunting, you'll basically see right away that there's a pretty good exit wound with a 30 out six and other high power, high caliber rifles. We're going to explore that. So my goal by the end of this video is to prove that a 30 out six round can stay in the body of a human or an animal. Now that I have on my super sweet headphones, let's go ahead and watch this deer first. 30 out six. Boom, drops instantly. And now we'll watch some ballistics gel. This is 30 out six hitting. No, that's the cavitation caught in higher speed camera. You can see how big that wound is. See that? That's what happens inside your body. It expands and destroys everything in this whole wound channel. So that would have been Charlie Kirk's neck. And then here we have kind of a montage. Charlie Kirk was not shot with the 30 out six. And here's why. As someone who's been hunting for 40 years, there's simply no way that the small amount of damage we saw in the video came from a 30 out. So you can see here in this freeze frame, that was a ballistic dummy head exploded. This is what most people are expecting when a 30 out six would hit his neck or his head. That's why there's such a big argument against this 30 out six narrative. Newsflash. If a 30 out six mashes into flesh, it will leave a massive exit wound. A 30 out six from 140 yards Look at that. would have simply torn his neck off. So they're saying in this case with their test on meat, which is what most people do, because obviously we have muscle and flesh. This is what it would look like in most cases. Look at this massive exit wound from the shot we took with the 30 out six. In my opinion, the exit wound was simply too small. So like many people say, he hunts and he sees these massive exit wounds on the animals. And now here we have somebody shooting another ballistic head. So this is the head with skull to simulate the human head and brain and tissue and everything else. Did you see that? Okay, so now again, this is why people are saying there is no way he was shot by a 30 out six or any other type of high powered rifle of this type. And just to really drive the point home, this guy here is going to shoot a pork neck. You stop. That's our close approximation to a deer neck. Well, to Charlie's neck. So, and again, for size reference, let's see what we got. Wow. So as you could see there, anything they've shot that is any type of tissue, any ballistic gel, dummies, all that stuff just explodes. That is why everyone's saying it cannot be a 30 out six. It cannot be a high powered rifle. But then you have a lot of other people saying it has to be a high powered rifle or else there would be no cavitation. And in some of the pictures and videos, we've seen some cavitation, or at least it seems like we did. And then the necklace goes flying off. So unless the bullet hit the necklace, we wouldn't expect the necklace to fly off unless there was cavitation. Same with the shirt flying out. So to have cavitation, you have to have a high caliber rifle bullet moving fast enough to cause it. So it has to be a high caliber rifle. And as I was telling you before, many of the subscribers have told me that they've actually seen the bullet sit inside a deer with 30 out six specifically, but also other calibers. So let's see what he says here. I've shot deer and antelope for 30 years. I've captured only two bullets from inside the many animals that I have shot. So in 30 years, this person has seen it twice. They shoot at the animal's shoulder, not the middle of the, you know, body, heart, lungs, main center mass shots, uh, very muscled, very thick scapular leg bones. And of course, if a bullet should make it through the, the near shoulder, it has the other side to get through also. Of the two bullets I remember finding, the rear shoulder stopped the bullets after blowing through the scapula and hitting the upper leg, which is quite a large bone. So in this case, they're saying it's hit some major bones. It would hit the shoulder and severely slow down the velocity. And then when it goes through the rest of the body, then it would stop in the other bone that it hits as well. So that makes sense. And then he says that he's seen a bullet go through both scapula and shatter thick leg bones and go on through the body. So he's seen both ends of the spectrum. He's seen a bullet stop inside of the body and he's seen bullets go straight through bone and flesh and everything and go out the other side. And just like that other theory, he also says that, what about the possibility of like a 55 grain type bullet in a 30 out six shell going 4,000 feet per second? The light bullet being pushed that fast could do some bouncing around inside the body possibly and not create an exit wound. And then here we have another one. I just spent the last week at elk camp while scouting for elk and ran across a white tail. 
300 Weatherby shoots the same 308 caliber as a 30 at 6, but it's way more powerful. So this is more powerful than a 30 at 6. A 30 at 6 fires 180 grains at 2,700 feet. Weatherby fires 180 grains at 3,350 feet. Now, if you shoot, you know that's a drastic difference, significantly more velocity. He says it didn't cause very much visible external damage, but it dropped the deer instantly. Not one step. There was just a clean entry wound the size of his pinky finger. Internally, it was very different. While cleaning it, all the blood vessels in the neck were jelly, and a gallon of blood was pooled in the chest cavity. So this kind of goes in line with what they said about Charlie Kirk. They said that basically his neck was destroyed, and it exploded his heart, basically. Hardly any blood was even on the ground. It was all internal. So all internal damage by this round that is significantly more powerful than a 30 out 6 Then this person says, I once shot a wounded deer in the neck with 130 grain 30 out 6 to put it out of its misery, and the bullet disintegrated when it hit the bone. So it can happen, but it didn't remain intact. Now, a lot of people are saying that the reports supposedly, obviously there's no real autopsy that's been released to public yet, but from the initial reports, they were saying it was a 30 out 6 but then they also said that it was pieces of the bullet. It wasn't a fully intact bullet, as far as I understand it. So if that's the case, that could change things a little bit. You know, like um, like some people are saying, you know, frangible rounds and whatnot. It seems that people are saying they've seen some magic bullet type behavior with a 30 out 6 while hunting animals. Then we have this person here. I've shot deer and elk. Depends where you hit. Large mass and bone, bullet often stays in. So they're confirming that if you hit large, massive bone then it can stay in. And they've had them go clear through. But they're saying here, but the human neck, go right through. We have this person down here. I deer hunt with the 30 out 6 and I can tell you from experience, the bullet usually, but not always exits. Have seen this with other calibers as well. Okay, and because I like data, I did some deep chat GPT research. Human forensic cases, no exit wounds. So we'll do humans first. High velocity rifle rounds like 30 out 6 Springfield generally have enough energy to pass through human target. However, forensic records show that in certain shootings, the bullet did not produce an exit wound, oftentimes like 7.62.308. So the most famous case, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Assassination. 30 out 6 MLK was shot by Remington 30 out 6 rifle firing a Remington Peters .30 soft point bullet. The bullet entered his right cheek, shattered his jaw, then exited the lower face and re-entered through the neck severing arteries and shattering the spine. The slug did not exit his body. It was found lodged just beneath the skin over his left shoulder blade. Forensic panels confirmed that the recovered bullet, a mushroomed soft point, was the one that caused his fatal wounds. In this case, the bullet passed through dense jawbone vertebrae, likely expended its energy, preventing a through and through wound. Then of course they talk about Charlie Kirk and the recent shooting, being a high-powered rifle, high-velocity round, and it was miraculous that the bullet stopped in there and he had, like, bones like the Man of Steel, okay? So they had that in there. But for sure, confirmed, according to archives and everything else, obviously MLK is another touchy subject as far as uh, government involvement and those kind of things, but 30 out 6 entered his right cheek, hit his spine, no exit wound. Charlie Kirk, they're saying 30 out 6 entered the front of the neck and stopped in the neck, and probably hit the spine and was found near the C7. All right, and as many people have said in the comments, and I did some research online, hunting cases, no exit wounded game animals. So frequently, with 30 out 6, 308, 270, seven millimeter magnums, they did not exit the animal. The expanded bullet was often found under the hide on the far side. And like in Charlie's case, it was found under the skin. In well-documented anecdotes, this typically occurs when using rapid expanding hunting bullets that mushroom to fragment inside large game, dumping their energy internally instead of passing through. The result is a lethal wound, but only one entry hole. The following are representative cases. A hunter shot a mid-sized Texas whitetail, broadside 30 out 6, 150 grain. The deer dropped after 20 feet on inspection, no exit wound. Whitetail deer, 308, 165 grain. Hunter reported taking a deer at just under 200 yards with a 308 Winchester, the deer dropped in his tracks with no exit wound. The bullet likely rapidly expanded, delivering a nice clean kill with great internal damage, but was found inside the deer. And you remember with Charlie Kirk, they're talking about major internal damage. They're talking about his vertebrae going up his neck, and then also supposedly from what I'm hearing, his heart. So he had major damage, like this is kind of talking about. If the round went in, say it did go in through the front, it would cause major, major damage internally and not pass through. Similar to these, these animals. Elk, 7mm, 140 grain. 
Bolt elk was shot at 250 yards. The shot was effective. The elk went down after a couple of steps, but the bullet did not exit. The bullet is designed for deep penetration, so the lack of exit suggests it likely hit heavy bone or massively expanded in the elk's vitals. So this would go along with the man of steel bones inside of Charlie Kirk. Then we have another one, deer 270 Winchester, 130 grain hollow point. 180 yard shot had a partial exit where the bullet was found lodged in the deer's body. The other two hits at closer range left no exit holes at all. The deer died quickly, but the lack of blood trails made it difficult. This aligns with other hunters' experiences that rapid fragmentation bullets often disintegrate inside a deer, destroying vitals without exiting. Now, these are high power rifles 270, 7 millimeter Remington, 308 Winchester, 30 out 6. So, across all of these, there's been examples where the bullet goes into the body and does not exit the body. There's no exit wound. There's massive internal damage because that energy is transferred directly to all the internals. So what are your thoughts on that? Let me know down in the comments, have you seen that before? Are you a hunter? Or have you been with someone else that hunted and you saw the bullet stay inside of something that you shot with a very high power rifle? All right, so next I had it grab me some real x-rays of bullets stuck in the body. Some of these are high powered rifles. Some of these are handguns. But this just goes to show it can easily get stuck in the body. So we have bullet here bullet there. So you have this bullet in the skull, right just as it pierced in. So it looks like it's stuck in the skull, actually. Then you have what looks like a mushroomed out hollow point in the throat. So now I want to point out here, the vertebrae is right here. And this bullet did not penetrate past that vertebrae. I can't tell if this is from the back or the front. If one of you are like an x-ray expert or something, let me know. But that just kind of proves right there that that stopped it. Now, this could be just a handgun round, not as high velocity, but the same idea is there. Then you have this sizable bullet stuck in there. Another semi-deformed bullet stuck inside the body. So as you can see, this is a fairly common occurrence to have bullets get stuck inside of the body and not just pass through. Some of these look like they're handgun rounds and some look like rifle rounds. But the idea is there. All right, so what are your thoughts? So I've shown humans that have bullets stuck in them. And famously, Martin Luther King had a 30 out 6 They went into his jaw, into his neck, and was found in his body. It didn't go through. There's no exit wound. So based on that, we can say that high-caliber rifles have been shot at human beings and not exited. There's multiple examples that I showed here. And there's Martin Luther King Jr. And then apparently, allegedly, there's also Charlie Kirk. And then obviously, the animals. So if you look at animals, different sizes different mass, different bone density, and things like that. But many, many instances that I'm seeing people contacting me and research I did on my own shows that it's pretty common for a bullet to stay inside of the animal. We're talking about 30 out 6 270 Winchester, 7mm Remington, uh, 308. These are pretty powerful, high-caliber rifles, and the bullet is just sitting inside. Now, it does drastic damage inside the body because all those foot-pounds coming at you they're just destroying the internals when they hit, but they're not exiting. So based on initial reports, he had his vertebrae destroyed and his heart was destroyed. That would go in line with theoretically getting shot from the front, having that cavitation, destroying the internals and not having an exit wound. Now, theoretically, if there was cavitation and the bullet stayed in, even if it fragmented, maybe it went in, caused cavitation, and that cavitation caused that wound to get bigger and also bleed out. I don't know. So let me know your thoughts on this. I've been obviously exploring various different theories, and this is the FBI official narrative, and I want to see, is it possible for that to be a front shot and for everything they're saying to happen? And so far, based on what I've seen, it seems like it's very plausible, much more plausible than I originally thought before I started doing this research. And no, I'm not a paid shill. I don't make any money off of this from the government or TPUSA or any of them. I'm just doing independent journalism and doing research. So in this case, based on the research that I've seen, it looks like it's very plausible and it has happened before. It's happened to other people and it's happened to other famous people in assassinations, Martin Luther King Jr. Now, it's also happened to animals. So this has been kind of universal. So let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you on the next one.